everyone. So today I just thought I would do a walk around of my 1996 Land Rover Discovery. Um, I watched a lot of these videos when I was building up uh, mine and hope this helps some people. So just quickly overall, um, it's a 1996, as I said, Land Rover Discovery um, SE. And this is the four liter V8 with an automatic um, as most of them were in North America. Um, I have a two inch lift and 26575R16 uh, mud tires on it. So kind of starting from the front, you can see um, I did a hood blackout. So this is actually painted on because this hood was originally off of a black donor car, um, which I had to paint because mine was kind of beat up. So I painted this. Um, and if you have any questions about any of this kind of stuff, you can just put it in the comments or visit my um, forum posts, which will be in the description below. Um, so next, you can see I did the 3D uh, Land Rover letters. Now these I got off of eBay and I think they were off of a more modern Land Rover because they were flat on the back and didn't fit. Um, so I had to take all the tape off and then sand them and then put new 3M adhesive on the back um, in order to stick those on. But they look so much better than the original, so I'm really glad that I did that. Um, some other parts have been swapped out, like the headlights and the grill, uh, just because mine were broken. And you might have noticed that the bumper looks very similar to stock, but also not. And that's because it is a stock bumper that I modified. So you can see I took the lower valence off the bottom. And then I actually built these uh, end caps. So you can see it's capped on the top and then on the back as well. Um, and then there's actually a support structure built behind this to support this end bit so that it doesn't flop around. Um, and then I actually made a tab so that the uh, fender bolts into the factory location um, to support the fender as well. Um, and I highly recommend doing this if you guys have a stock bumper rather than building or buying an HD bumper um, these bumpers are, I mean, they're, they're not too thick, but they're stout enough. And if you're not putting a winch on, you don't really need it. And if you're just going after the look, you can easily do the end caps like I did and uh, get a similar look. I also trimmed this plastic part in order to make this fit. Um, cause I tucked it up to the body a little bit closer than what it was from factory. And then just added some riv nuts for the uh, license plate. You might also notice these tow hooks. So. These tow hooks are actually off of an 09 to 14 F-150. Um, and I chose those because they're cheap and you can get them everywhere here in North America. Um, and they being rated for an F-150, they're plenty for the Land Rover. So in order to get those on, I actually boxed in the, um, the bumper mount, um, these mounting arms here in quarter inch steel, which you can see I welded all in. Um, and then I built this extra support that connects as well to the um the tow hook and then goes back these bolts were upgraded to 10.9s um, rather than the 8.8s that were originally there and they're a larger diameter as well um, and that's just to make sure that when you're pulling on this it's not going to pull the whole bumper off um, like you see on the internet so that's basically how i did that um, we'll go over the underneath stuff once i get it up on the lift so we'll just stay on the outside for now so kind of working onto this side, you can see um, my custom CB radio mount. So I actually, this is just eighth inch steel that I bent um, around to match the, the radius and cut it and then weld it on this part um, to uh, mount the, the radio. And then I just got an elbow and then it just goes, tucks underneath the cowling here inside. Um, and I'll show you that once we get to the engine bay. So just some stickers and there's another shot of the tires. Um, so with these up front, with the two inch uh, heavy duty lift, which you can see, you can see the springs in there. Um, so with the two inch heavy duty lift, it also has uh, longer shocks. And then I got the longer stainless steel braided brake lines. And I had to adjust the bump stops and some of that other stuff as well, um, which again, I'll show you when we're underneath the car. Clearance up front. So I didn't have to do any trimming other than to this plastic piece uh, right here. Um, and they fit fine. The only thing that I notice is that the steering, um, you don't get a lot of angle out of the steering. And so I really recommend if you're gonna do this to do um, wheel spacers, although then you might have some issues up here 
as it gets pretty close once it fits up in there. So um, it's too bad you can't go any bigger because it looks like there's definitely more room, um, but it can be tough to get the, the steering. Um, these are actually the factory wheels as well that I just painted gloss black. Um, and then obviously the, the cam twos again, um, 265.75 R16, which is like a 31 or a 32, something like that. Um, so they look pretty good on here. I wish I had gone with 33s, but um, they don't fit very well apparently. Um, and these are kind of maxing it out as far as this lift. So up top, um, I have this custom light bar. Um, so this is just, I think, two inch um, square tubing that I bent all the way around. Um, and I actually did this just with a grinder. You can probably see the bend lines here. Um, I just notched it on the back and then bent it at many points in order to match the radius to the roof, uh, which you can see. And then I mounted these tabs on the back and then my KC lights up top. Um, the wires all run inside um, and then over to the other side, which I'll show you when we get over there. Um, then I just use these bolts to clamp down onto the rain gutter. Um, I made this as well. This is just eighth inch. And then these are connected into riv nuts to just help keep it from pulling out like that from the car, which is a problem I had um, originally. So I'll just pop over and show you where the wires go in. So you can see the large bit of wire here comes out. Um, and then I just made this clamp to hold them on. And then it tucks into there. So I had notched out this whole part of the roof rack um, and then tucked it into there and then silicone it all up uh, to seal it and I haven't had any leaks um, even now that I've sealed the sunroofs up it uh, I don't get any water inside so all of my other water was coming from the sunroof and not from that um, you'll also notice I have a bit of a roof rack here so this is just one inch um, square tubing uh, this is aluminum and then I notched the top and bolted it into the factory crossbars all the way across and that allowed me to mount my uh, Rotopax jugs. Um, and then I ended up just using a, uh, a gun lock here to uh, lock them into place with some stainless steel cable. Um, I did modify the gas cap and that I added this cable. Um, you know, most modern cars don't have a gas cap that comes off. And uh, I drive an F-150 every day and they don't have gas caps at all. So, um, in order to prevent me from forgetting it at a gas station, I added that just in case. So also just a tip for people that have these, um, if your weather seals are starting to crack, I took some black RTV and just put it into the cracks and then smoothed it all out. And honestly, from even a few feet away, you can't tell at all that uh, they aren't nicer looking seals. So that's just a tip rather than buying all new seals, which I actually have. Um, that I got off a donor car, but I uh, I didn't want to go through the ordeal yet of changing them. So moving on to the back, um, the bumper caps, I ended up painting these just because they were super faded um, and the Krylon paint that I used matched exactly what I would expect the OEM to look. Um, all stainless steel screws replacement. Um, so a spare tire again painted. You'll notice this one is um, a different style of rim. So I ended up um, getting this off of a donor car and um, I wanted an aluminum spare um, for a few reasons but it uses the same lug nuts rather than the the steel wheel lug nuts which originally came on here um, so that just kind of simplified that and it just takes some of the weight off the the back end in order to fit this you'll see it's pretty tight clearance wise um, but it doesn't touch I ended up making some quarter inch aluminum spacers that just sit behind where the wheel mounts to the um, the mount there. And basically just it's quarter inch aluminum flat bar, um, which just spaced it out a quarter inch just so that it didn't touch the door. Now looking back, I think I should have maybe gone with something a little bit smaller than quarter inch so that the rubber would just barely touch the door. Um, that might've given it a little bit more security as it's bouncing around but i haven't had too many problems and i don't notice that it shakes too much but i haven't done any long distance off-roading on a gravel road per se um, to really test that out so that's kind of the outside um, other than the shovel which you can see um, i because i don't have a winch i needed to make sure i had a, a method of recovering myself and the shovel is really easy um, I just hose clamp these uh, rubber, I think they're called quick fist clamps. 
um, and I just always clamped those on and uh, that mounted up perfect. So again, if you want to see what the original car kind of looked like and how, how it looked before, you'd have to see, um, check out the, uh, the forum post there in the description. Um, so you can see here the hood is black underneath because the donor car was black. Um, a lot of weird things on this car as I was rebuilding it, um, a lot of weird problems that I had. This hood didn't really line up and it required a lot of modifying. The hood catch I had to move, I had to move this, um, nothing fit correctly. And I'm not really sure why, um, because the body lines are still bad, but they're a lot better than they were when I had just bolted it up without modifying those, th <coughs> without modifying those things. Um, so anyway, in here, I did a lot of rust repair. So basically everything underneath here is new um, on both sides. The battery box is new, so I built this myself. Um, all that steel underneath is new, and then there's a bunch of other stuff. So a bunch of replaced parts, I ended up redoing um, the top end gaskets, the valley pan, and a bunch of other gaskets in the top end. Um, you can see I painted it, it's not very clean right now, but I did some paint work. Um, this is kind of cool because I did silver on top and then black for the rest, um, which when it's clean looks very nice. Um, and just a bunch of other things, fixing leaks, fixing other problems that I had. It already had a bunch of new parts on it when I got it, such as a radiator um, and a few other odds and ends. Um, overall, it runs pretty good. And I'll show you a sound clip with the um, aftermarket exhaust that I have. see some of my wiring here um, and then the fuses and then they just run back and and go inside the cab um, so that's pretty much that and then uh, sorry to be bouncing around it's uh, I didn't didn't rehearse this so on this side you could see the um, where the CB radio cable comes in and then goes down and tucks inside there so I just put a, uh, a grommet there and then uh, routed it inside the cab Okay, so now let's take a look at the inside. Um, so inside was really where um, most of the work ended up happening. So a lot of stuff was not really working when I bought this truck. Um, none of the door locks worked, none of the door latches worked. Um, I actually almost had to climb out the window the first time because none of the latches worked. Um, and uh, while we were loading it on the trailer, it was quite a disaster. Um, so these door panels have been off at least 10 times um, for each door. Um, so that's getting kind of old. But a bunch of this stuff was replaced too with um, parts from my donor car. Um, and then as you can see, I have extra door seals on here just because the door seals are a little bit squished and you can't really get new ones. Um, so you can see there kind of where it, the roof rack clamps in. And um, so yeah, let's move inside. So the biggest job that I had was um, this floorboard. So this entire thing basically from all the way up there um, to all the way back here was completely rotted, um, like missing. You could put your feet right through the floor. Um, so I cut all of that out and bent all new sheet metal and then replaced it. Um, unfortunately, the carpet is not easy to take out now. Um, so I can't show you. This rocker was also uh, completely redone all the way back to here. Um, you might notice the seat boxes are a little bit different. So these are actually steel seat boxes that I made. The plastic ones were totally cracked and broken. So I bent up the steel um, all the way around and then got these fancy uh, washers and made these seat boxes. And these are a lot nicer than the crappy plastic ones that were there. Um, I did a bunch of other things, like I replaced the plastic nuts that they used for these and replaced them with riv nuts. Um, much better just for taking things apart again. Um, 
And then I actually had these original floor mats, which was cool, um, again, from the donor car. So seats are actually out of a newer donor car. Um, they were heated, but they don't work anymore. Um, all the power functions do work, so that's nice. Um, and they were a lot less ripped than the original seats that I had in here. A bunch of these other interior parts are also from the donor car as well, um, because this stuff was all broken originally. Um, you can see I added the wood trim as well. All of that was from the donor car. Uh, none of that was uh, factory on this vehicle. Um, and I was able to get all that out. Um, some other stuff like the uh, cup holder was originally um, broken. Um, I was able to fix that so that that works. And then um, you'll notice here, these are the switches to the overhead lights. Um, so I ended up popping out that tray, the storage tray that was there, making this aluminum panel and then um, adding these switches in. So right now you can see the wiring. I'm waiting on a, uh, a plastic box to put the, the junction in. Um, and then the green lights light up when the lights are on. I had to do a head unit swap. Um, the head, there actually was no head unit in here when I bought it. And um, I had quite a few stereo problems when I was working on this car. Um, none of the speakers worked, the subwoofers didn't work. Um, all kinds of wiring nightmares, but we sorted that out. Um, this is a Discovery 2 mirror with the compass. Um, unfortunately, the compass does not work and I'm not really sure why. Um, so hoping to figure that out. Um, LED lights I swapped on the interior. You can see that one back there too. Um, much better than the, the originals. Um, just helps you see at night. Um, sunroofs are sealed, unfortunately. The front one did actually work, um, but it leaked really badly. And I just, I'd taken the headliner out probably 10 times at this point and didn't want to take it out again. So I ended up just sealing it up. Um, the back one, the motor actually didn't work anyway. So I ended up just sealing that one up. That was an easy decision. Um, so it doesn't leak anymore either. Um, other than that, again, um, factory floor mats, same kind of deal back here. I had some rust repair in here, um, that I did. A bunch of the carpet is new as well from the other car. Um, these seats are original to this one. In the back, so I did a bunch of things in the back. This one has the jump seats. I'm not actually sure if all of them do in the D1s or not, um, but this one has them. I added these uh, tie downs, and this was a big thing for me um, to be able to kind of strap stuff down while I'm going off road. Um, and so I put, you can't see it right now, but there is a skinny plate of steel that, that goes underneath the carpet here that these are bolted to, and that's sandwiched on the other side to a plate on the bottom that's much bigger. Um, and then that's kind of bolt sandwich all those plates together with these on top. Um, so they're definitely super secure. There's something you can actually ratchet strap to. Um, and you can see I have them all the way around the trunk um, just for tying down coolers and that sort of thing. Um, trailer wiring. So I ended up just buying this harness. I do not remember the brand of this harness. I think it started with an H. Um, bought it off Amazon and then just clipped the wires in the um, the original trailer harness and spliced these in. Works perfect. I run it under the door um, just in the crack here um, out. Um, I would like to actually run it outside the car permanently but it's fine like that for now. Um, and then this is actually a custom door sill because I removed all of the sound deadening out of this car. Um, there was a ton of it. It was causing the car to rot. Um, I removed it and ended up, in order to remove it, I had to cut it all apart anyway. Um, and that caused a lot of problems with some of the um, gaps on these sort of things. So I ended up making one out of wood and then adding this kind of rubber um, strip to it. Um, it looks pretty close to the factory one. I'm, I, I probably could have made it out of uh, metal, which would have been a little bit better, um, or even uh, a thick plastic, but um, that's maybe a future replacement. Um, yeah, so other than that, there's not too much uh, else that I've done. Um, again, just a lot of like repair work and uh, fixing things. But um, as far as mods, that's pretty much it. And then uh, we'll skip over and show you guys underneath.
All right, now that it's up on the lift, I can give you guys a tour of the underside. So starting up front here, you can see a little bit of the, uh, the bumper brackets here that I was talking about earlier and where the tow hook mounts. Um, so you can see that that's all been quite beefed up in order to be used as a recovery point. So I think I mentioned earlier, um, I have HD steering bars from Terra Firma, um, front and back. The Panhard bar is actually stock. Um, for some reason, this vehicle seems to be, have a little bit of a twisted chassis um, because the axle is actually shifted the wrong way for being lifted. Um, so I never got an extended one because it didn't really need it. The axle's already sitting wrong. And you can actually see here um, that this side has the two inch lift coils and the two inch longer shocks, as well as the four inch extended brake lines. Um, this side has the same setup, but with a two inch spacer. And that's because the whole vehicle was sitting crooked when I bought it and I couldn't find anything that seemed like it was twisted or wrong. Um, and I, I couldn't really determine whether the coil springs were sagging or if something bigger was wrong with the, the chassis itself. So I ended up putting a spacer in there. It corrected it um, and I haven't really seen any downsides to that. Moving back from there, you could see again the aftermarket string stabilizer. This is just a cheap one um, that came with the lift kit. Now you might notice these things. So these are spacers for the sway bar because um, the sway bar was hitting here on the front drive shaft. And I think there's a lot of people out there running uh, two inch lift kits that are probably running into this same problem if they use the factory sway bars They've just never flexed it enough to notice. Um, I did a full bump compression test um, Because I wanted to make sure that everything was going to fit perfectly and it didn't so I ended up making these one inch Spacers and you could see it not only shifts it down but backwards um, And that was the best way that I found to do this. Um, this is just regular old uh, rectangle steel bar um, or tubing rather uh, You could see the rebuilt brake calipers under here and all the new uh, Lines and then the other thing you might notice although it's a little bit muddy um, Is the disconnecting front sway bars, so I have you can see a bolt here and then a uh, a Pin on the other side um, That you can pull out and then the bar itself rotates up and this is the mount up top so Basically how it works is you just pull the pin the bar rotates up and then you put the bolt and the pin back in up here And it holds it up out of the way um, and it's the same story on the rear So that's how I ended up doing my disconnecting sway bars um, The bolts were pretty expensive and they were hard to get um, because they're so big So you're not going to be able to find that at a regular hardware store if you're trying to do it that way um, So next thing you could see is the exhaust so factory Y pipe to a full custom system here. So basically it's just a short little pipe that I welded up, um, which adapted to my Magnaflow 14 inch muffler, which just goes to a turn down. Um, it uses the factory, um, mounting location, although with an aftermarket hanger, um, because that's the best thing that I could come up with. Um, I definitely like the sound. Um, it's actually not as loud as you would imagine it to be. Um, for being so small and it just saved it saved a ton of weight and just a ton of complexity like the old one went all the way back Over top of the axle right out to the back um, Had a resonator and a giant muffler under here and this just tucks it all up so much cleaner um, and I'll show you guys after um, The I have a skid plate over there that I'm working on and it's going to cover this entire area underneath including the um, parking brake as well as the whole part of this exhaust and the transfer case. And this helped big time in tucking everything up tighter so that that would work. Um, not too much else new under here. Um, a new donut, uh, new bushings in the A-frame and a new ball joint as well. Uh, again, the same shocks and uh, springs. Um, so again, all this is new, all the brake lines are new. Um, don't mind this. I ended up uh, this got kinked off-road. I, I hit this on something. This was a lot cleaner and more factory looking before um, So again the sway bar disconnect in the rear uh, same kind of story it goes up and just mounts there um, Also spacers in the back as well. You also notice I have extended bump stops um, There's a few different ways to do this. This is the way I decided to do it 
Um, if I were going to do it again, what I would have done was welded bolts or something facing upwards studs onto the original plate and that would have allowed me to stack different size spacers rather than being committed to welding a particular spacer onto it um, because I thought about doing a body lift after this and that would have made me have to readjust all of this again very likely. Um, I know they sell extended spacers, they're quite expensive and I don't really see the point when you can just do something like this. Um, and honestly, you didn't really need to weld it all the way around, but I had just gotten my brand new welder and I wanted to learn, which is why they look so terrible. Um, and this was an easy project to learn on. So I definitely recommend um, if you guys are looking for that, I would rather do it yourself than buy the actual ones that you can buy because they're vastly overpriced for what they're giving you. Um, and this is definitely a necessity. Um, I, I read a lot of forums about fitting these tires um, on this size of lift and uh, nobody seemed to be talking about things like bump stops and the uh, sway bar spacers and any of that kind of stuff but it was absolutely necessary to make the tires fit correctly and uh, anybody that says you don't need it um, probably hasn't actually flexed it all the way out but if you ever hit a big bump even on the road um, you could definitely damage something from that so I highly recommend doing um, some cycling of your suspension and making sure. And basically all I did to do that was I would pull the opposite springs, like I would pull this spring, leave the other one in, and then just compress this upwards with a jack. Um, make sure your frame is supported really well. Um, you definitely don't want it falling on top of you or anything. Um, I did it on the ground, not on the lift, um, just because I thought it was safer. And um, I definitely recommend doing that or just climbing up a hill or something to, to test that. Um, you can also see back here, I removed the mud flaps. Um, this was all totally rusted anyway, the bracket was gone. Um, and you could see my camel cut. I'm sorry, it's a little bit dark. Let me see on this side if it's brighter. Yeah, okay, so you can see the camel cut here. So it's cut back quite a bit. This is probably, you know, a good couple of inches um, that I cut off. And again, that was absolutely necessary. I cut originally about an inch or something off of it um, because I had bump tested it to that, but then I ended up taking it um, off road and I tested it again and it bumped backwards a little bit. Not really sure why, maybe just some play in the suspension or whatever, or the, the angle I was at, but it ended up rubbing and it bent up some of this, the aluminum. So I had to, to cut it back a little bit further. Um, when you do that, make sure you sand it really good, like round off the edges so your tires don't rub and it cuts into your tire. Um, so again, you can kind of just get a quick, um, better look at, uh, some of the tires and stuff. Um, you know, I ended up painting the wheels. You can see some of the paint is actually coming off. Um, I did black obviously, and then I used a paint pen to do the silver on the Land Rover, um, which was cool. And then again, these are the 26575R16 uh, BFG mud terrains, and they look pretty awesome. I definitely would have gone with uh, 33s if I were to do it again, but that's just how it goes. Had I put 33s, I'm sure I would have said I wish I had done 35s. Um, I will say up front, again, I'll mention that the steering, um, and I actually forgot to mention that, the steering is quite limited. Um, these rub on everything when they turn and so I had to adjust You can't really see that I had to put a longer um, Steering stop and then weld this plate onto the back of the nut because it wasn't contacting very well um, I'm not sure why that is but and So again, that's limited my steering a lot. So it definitely has a lot wider turning radius than before I would actually say that this thing turns worse than my full-size f-150 um, if I were to do this again I'd love to add um, wheel spacers or offset wheels just to kick these out a little bit more. But I was concerned that that would cause rubbing up top um, because when it tucks, it's fairly close to the fender. Um, and so I was a little bit concerned that that would cause some rubbing up there. So um, I haven't done it yet. Um, I also changed a bunch of other parts that aren't nearly as interesting. Like the top towers are all galvanized and a bunch of those other parts, the spring seats and all that. And just a quick look, you can see the extended bump stops up here as well. Um, not nearly as extended as on the rear, just about an inch. So that pretty much wraps up the, the underside. 
So thanks guys for watching. I, I hope this has been helpful and hopefully um, you find some inspiration for building up your disco.